Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Word Balloon, the comic book conversation show. John Suntra is here, fresh from C2E2. We've got a couple great episodes for you for Monday. Uh, first of all, we're going to be talking to Tim Seeley and Sarah Beatty about their amazing comic from Vault Comics, Money Shot. Money Shot is raw. And when I say raw, I'm talking about hard R-rated. Pretty good stuff, man. Uh, we're talking about the old school heavy metal days of uh, science fiction and uh, a touch of nudity. I won't call it pornography, although pornography is part of the subject of uh, Money Shot. The premise is uh, it's about 50 years in the future, and um, the U.S. government has abandoned funding for science. So how do scientists make money to continue their experiments? Well, a group of scientists get together and decide to create a YouTube slash Pornhub sort of video channel where they are traveling the galaxy having uh, interspecies sex to fund their science. It's very funny. It's very hard edge Star Trek. You will kind of notice a, a bit of uh, the same kind of philosophy that maybe Germ James Kirk had in terms of uh, no alien is uh, too strange to uh, sit down and uh, jump into bed with. And I know I'm uh, speaking in general terms, but uh, it's really, really funny. It's a great science fiction comedy, though it's filled with action as well. It's terrific. And uh, I've got the writers of the series uh, here, Tim Seeley and Sarah Beatty. Sarah is a great comedian and uh, comedy writer who has uh, written for Weekend Update, providing jokes for Saturday Night Live. Um, along with doing uh, other script doctoring here and there. Tim, you know from uh, many Word Balloon conversations and many uh, great uh, projects from Hack Slash to uh, great work at DC and Marvel, other image books as well, uh, G.I. Joe back in the day. Um, it, they got together and they've made a really funny, raw book. Rebecca Isaacs is the artist, and we talk about the whole uh, crew behind Money Shot as far as uh, the cartooning and lettering and coloring uh, and artist uh, crew. But uh, it's a great conversation, but it's very raw. And I warn you now, if you're easily offended or if you got kids in the car, this might not be an episode to listen to with your grandparents or even your parents. Uh, because uh, not only do we uh, swear, but, um, you know, we're, we're okay with uh, talking about uh, sex in a fun, free way. And that's why I appreciate um, uh, Sarah you know, being uh, one of the gang as far as that goes. Tim and I have had great conversations over the years on the record and off the record, but uh, it was great to see that Sarah was so uh, free as well. You might know Sarah as well from her uh, Twitter, Instagram, and uh, other uh, accounts as Nacho Sarah. Very funny woman and uh, very free with uh, her opinions and her point of view, and I think she's uh, hilarious. And it was really fun to uh, get to know her a little bit in this conversation. I look, to, look forward to talking to her in the future. There are four issues into Money Shot. It's a great series. It's flying off the racks, but definitely worth your attention. Tim Seeley, Sarah Beatty, talking about Money Shot and all it entails on today's Word Balloon. Brought to you by the League of Word Balloon listeners. Thank you greatly, League, for your support. It was fantastic meeting so many of you at C2E2 this weekend. You can hear the roughness in my voice. <clears throat> it's worth it because you were all there. Letting me know that you're listening to Word Balloon and that you support the show, it truly means a lot. Word Balloon is free. It will always be free. But if you want to help out the cause, you can subscribe via Patreon, patreon.com slash Word Balloon, or you can click on the front page ad at wordballoon.com. That will take you to my Patreon page. As I always say, is Word Balloon worth a dollar a month to you? Is it worth the price of a comic book a month to you? If you think so, if you can swing it and help me uh, by sponsoring Word Balloon, I really appreciate it. Thank you greatly for your support, League of Word Balloon listeners. Word Balloon also sponsored by Aftershock Comics. Great books are coming up. Now, we had in February John Layman's The Man Who Effed Up Time. And in just a few days, we'll have Stephanie Phillips's Artis, Artemis and the Assassins. They will be included by other uh, great books like Zach Thompson's Undone by Blood, God Killers by Mark Sable. They both were at Terrificon. Or pardon me, C2E2. And uh, also, uh, you know, they're, they're going along with the other pantheon of amazing Aftershock books. Their catalog is filled with great comics from people like Marguerite Bennett and Paul Jenkins, Tim Seeley, of course, an Aftershock alum, Colin Bunn, another guy who was there at uh, C2E2, Donny Cates also there, uh, Col you know, so many other great creators with Aftershock books. Check out their website. You'll find full story descriptions, preview pages, and the way to get these books digitally or through the diamond code, ordering them through your local shop at aftershockcomics.com. All right, let's get into it now. Um, 
I, you might notice a little pause in my voice because I was having trouble recording, and when I was recording them, I would hear a delay in my voice, so if I sound like I'm a little deliberate when I'm asking my questions, I'm just kind of taking my time so that I'm clear. I wasn't sure if they could hear the echo as well. Thankfully, the echo didn't record, but uh, we had a great conversation. We were all over the place. Tim and I were at our various homes in Chicago, and Sarah was at her undisclosed location as well, uh, way at another part of the country, Uh, but we had a great conversation. It was a lot of fun, and again, last warning, uh, it's raw. Because Money Shot is raw in a great, entertaining, fun way. So if you are easily offended, this may not be the Word Balloon episode for you. Uh, We've got another episode coming your way uh, with uh, Jimmy Palmiotti and Amanda Cotter. Who would have thought a conversation with the creators of Harley Quinn? That's the uh, less uh, salacious conversation. But it is. So it's uh, it's all salacious uh, subjects on today's Word Balloon. And we start things off with this conversation with Sarah Beatty and Tim Seeley on today's Word Balloon. Tim Seeley, Sarah Beatty, welcome to Word Balloon. Congratulations on Money Shot. It's a great comic. And I, I want to hear everything. Everything. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you for having me. And Tim, I'm speaking on Tim's behalf. <laughs> Thank you for having Tim. He's so lonely. And Sarah asked me uh, before we started, she said, can I swear on this show? I was like, of course. No, you can't. This John Suntress is a sensitive guy. He'll no. break his little <laughs> heart. <laughs> I was like, it's too much pressure if I can't swear. Of course I you can swear. I can't. Sarah, yeah. I work in radio. So having a oh, podcast allows me to speak freely and not have to worry about the FCC and go as long as I want and whatever. So, yes, you can swear. Fuck yeah. Fuck yes. <laughs> well, as I told Hi. you, when Tim first told <laughs> me that oh, I'm making money shot with Sarah Beatty, I'm like, OK. And he's, he's like, she's a comedian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, I put two and two together. And I think I read a couple articles and realized I'm speaking to Nacho Sarah. And as yes. I told you, I'm 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 aware of your work. So <laughs> <laughs> my tit pics, my uh, titty pictures. Yes, that's that's what I'm known for. Very proud of those. Lots and of also effort. some amazing internet joke. I mean, it's not just the boobs. Let's the boobs are the part of it. But but you're known because you're like one of the funniest people on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yes. Thank you. I absolutely. I try. And also, I don't know what I'm doing half the time. I just usually just I don't know, just spout shit on there. But people like it, so that's that's fun. That's I mean, good. Not, not all people. You're not really with, with Trump supporters, but everybody else, you're very popular. <laughs> you know what? A lot of Trump supporters follow me. I have no idea why. Oh, oh. Um, I think they're confused no or. <laughs> They just want to, I don't know. I think they're curious because they like want to fuck me, but they just like, but then they like don't agree with the politics of my politics. And then they're just like, but my dick's confused. <laughs> I don't know what to do. So it's like, I get really odd responses sometimes. Yeah. It's, it's fun. I'm like, just, I'll be fine if the Trump supporters stop following me. I don't know why they do, but whatever. Or, you know, you know change America by, by causing lots of confused, angry boners. And that maybe that'll change America, maybe. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. and also confused from the boners. liberal standpoint, you'll, you'll scan Fox News. And obviously there's a lot of attractive reporters and pundits and anchors there, at least on the yeah. surface. So I kind of understand. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. You're the Megan Kelly. <laughs> like, are you, you comparing me to like a Fox News reporter? <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, you're, well, no, yeah. like you're you're the <laughs> you're the you're the mirror universe. You know, like the opposite version. Yeah, you're, you're the Bizarro. Yeah. You know? Thank you. I was going to say Bizarro. See, I know, yes. I know the, the nerd lingo. <laughs> and and for, forgive me, but if I can interject a little Trump news today, he's pardoning everybody. And immediately my mind went. Read that, yeah. Yeah, I went to the comic book world, and it's like, all right, I'm going to pardon Victor Von Doom, a tumor from Atlantis. (laughs) You know, it's like, okay. Oh, he's so horrible. It's just, it's just (laughs) awful. It's like it's gotten. I mean, it's been like three years, but for me, it's actually gotten to the point where I'm like finally exhausted, and it's. Yes. I've been, I've been like doing less Trump jokes lately, but. 
because I'm just I'm just so exhausted with it. It just never ends, especially after the trial, and it's just this nightmare. It's just like oh, I kind of almost need a break. But then it's just every day the news. He's doing something fucking horrible. It's just this giant toddler, orange toddler with his tiny dick. <laughs> that he's trying to like swing around, but he can't because it's too small. And it's <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I won't no, go no. on and on, uh, and I don't want to. <laughs> honestly, Money Shot is this dystopian future of what mm-hmm. if a lot of people on the right? I'm shrugging because how else would you explain it? But there's kind of this anti-science movement that we're living in mm-hmm. right now, and you guys kind of extrapolate what's going to happen in the future. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, it kind of fits into the tone of the book. Well, yeah, the, well, Tim, I don't know. Yeah, you want to say, like, our future arc is kind of revolves around that a little bit. I don't know if you want to give any spoilers away, but. Yeah, I mean, well, because when we were originally talking about it, and so I, I, I kind of come up with this rough idea um, about this, like, the future and not being able to fund science. And so the only way to do it was to for these scientists to basically all become Captain Kirk's. And like have sex across the universe and record it because then people would actually pay for exploration, and that was sort of the rough idea. But then mm. um, when I asked Sarah if she would want to be involved in the story, uh, she, I was surprised because I've been asking her to do comics for like ten years, and she finally <laughs> said, "Yeah, they're all this shit." And she just said no. But then having her on it kind of added, you know, this other angle to it um, because. She does. She knows what it's like to live in this world of being like an internet celebrity, and um, and then also that there was a part of my pitch that was sort of, you know, so the future is anti science and kind of celebrity obsessed, and you know everybody's famous for their five minutes or whatever, or five seconds. But there was this part in there mm-hmm. about like at some point the president of the United States uh, seizes this project and is like going to use it for himself, and so the next arc is about this. Um, what happens in, in the future after Trump? So, like, basically, you know, we have a president who is who is not Trump um, because it's the future. But you can see kind of what happened to politics after in our universe. And our yeah. Earth is like now we can only elect total dicks. Like, you can't be a good person. We don't. We're not interested in you in any way unless you're shocking and awful and like uh, we, like we just want bullies now in the future. So that's that. It yeah. kind of does entertainment. Uh, Whenever. Yeah, it filters right. We want someone who entertains us, not someone who like helps our lives, you know. <laughs> so like that's kind of the next arc. So uh, and Sarah kind of helped me figure out this this politician of the future. Yeah, he's not going to be Trump like we discussed, but it's going to be in that vein of just just meat headedness, just yep stupidity. Like oh, I can't remember that movie. What's it called? It, Idiocracy. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes. Kind of what we're zooming sure. towards right now. Yeah, or just like uh, sort of like we want somebody not even just dumb but like petty and you know like I don't know for this and maybe to some degree it's because the our country's kind of gotten sick and maybe the whole world has gotten sick of this sort of the 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 fakeness that uh, politicians put on and I think everybody knew inside they were just total shit. And so instead of asking them to be better people, we just told them to act like what they really are. So that's kind of, that's kind of our pitch for the, the our universe in general. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> I'm not depressed <laughs> talking about politics now. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. the world is on fire. Everything's on fire. So we made a so had, had you guys been looking to do a project together? I mean, you know, and then this idea came up. How did How did it all happen? You know, yeah, Tim, he came to me with the, he pitched to me, but I think okay. you were pitching, you pitched, did you pitch it to me before? And I, no, I don't think I turned it down before. I think when you pitched it to me, then I was like, oh, wait, dicks and tits and space. That sounds awesome. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> but you came up with the idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, I mean, I was trying to think of this the other day is how I, how I even know you, which I'm not a hundred percent sure I even recall. I know we met on the Twitter, but I know we used to like get on the phone and talk like teenagers and just bullshit. And then I started mm-hmm. at, like, and, and this was before like I mean I don't remember you know I don't count it's been Twitter. years. I know I can't really like trace back our history. You know I met you at Comic Con once, but I think it was like 
10 years ago. Yeah. And then, <laughs> but you didn't know who the hell I was. It was a long time ago. And then I, I, I had pitched you. I was like, you're hilarious. I think it would be amazing to use your, your voice in a story. And so I pitched you a bunch of stuff over the years, and you would always be like, eh, yeah. you know, eh. Fuck like, off. Fuck yeah. off. And then yeah. Like, <laughs> Leave and me alone, nerd. Be gone, nerd. Like, you know, <laughs> like, my real friends are like Scott Derrickson, and he just directed Doctor Strange, so you're a small potato, Seely. And I'd be like, well, <laughs> <I'm trying." laughs> I But then, and I, I comic you know, book. Jeez. Yeah, it's just <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> And Lower then, my fucking standards, Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just slumming it now. I'm just like screw it. This is the lowest I could think. Thank you for bringing me here, Tim. Yeah, I made you made your your agent. Though. I, I did something right, but, uh, <laughs> but at some point I I hit you with this idea, and you. You know, I hit you once, and you were like, yeah, I'll get back to you. And I like, oh, that's not going to happen. All right, she turned me down again. And then you all of a sudden wrote me back, and you're like, this is the one I'm doing. Let's get on it. So I was like, oh, shit. Uh, and and so I started writing something uh, for knowing that I wanted you to, like, go in and fix all my dialogue and make it. Well, I knew that if I, I worked with you, it would be grosser and dirtier and funnier. Yeah. And also that anything that I came up with that was offensive, you would – you would come up with something more offensive. So I was like, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll be covered. So <laughs> How far can I go? <laughs> yeah. And I think. Uh, How often do I, do I write something and you're all like, Sarah, that's too far. <laughs> it's like, no, we can't do that. I mean, at least once an issue, but. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. It's yeah. fun. It's good. You know, that which, but I mean, I I wanted that and I got it, which is great. But uh, I think like you you also provide this sort of I don't know, um, like a sincerity to it that I think sometimes uh, when I'm coming up with jokes, they just seem sort of like you know a guy trying to think of what, what would be funny here, and you manage to make it seem more honest and real. So I think that's kind of part of why the book connects as well as it does, and why people read it. And I mean, also the books on the internet, but like. But I think the sincerity uh, and the honesty really connects with people. Yeah, I think I think people were surprised when it like they noticed the story kind of going like had like heart in it. Like I, when I like pitch like yes. tell my like friends about like I have friends, but I have people that I know acquaintances. Um, I'll be like, it's not porn. It's not just all sex. There's actually like heart. There's like relationships yeah. in it. It's it's you know it's you've got to have all those layers and you should, you, you're the one that comes up with all of that stuff so it's like I think it's a nice nice little book yeah <laughs> it went really well which I'm really excited about that's fun yeah we right? is, there, is there any pushback <laughs> from Vault in terms of do this well you can't go that far or anything like that no great no, not <laughs> no, they're like, go for it. Yeah, I mean, I guess we were sort of surprised because I, well, you know, the only time the the Vault guys are, um, they're really smart about, you know, kind of the world that exists outside the the comic book store and the fact that, you know, like erotic stuff and, and all that um, and sexy stuff has a, has a better um, representation in bookstores and, and people read you know, intelligent smut, I guess, out in the real world. And they don't... Um, yeah, so, like, so they, I mean, they've always been really supportive of it. I think the, you know, the, one of the things that they're always sort of pushing me to do, and it's something I pitched and, and I totally agree with, but it's like, you know, hey, don't just do things that you think are sexy. Do things that other people, everybody thinks is sexy. So, um, and I, I think, you know, having Rebecca and Sarah on it gives it that sort of, you know, you get their viewpoint of what's sexy too. And so it doesn't seem like just this, you know, the standard view. I mean, I'm, I'm a straight white guy. So like the things that I think are hot, even though I'm pretty open-minded, um, they're still like, you know what? I need to know, let, let, let Rebecca pick this, this character, or let, let Sarah pick this side of it so that we get like a, a, a full incorporated viewpoint, which I think makes the book work even yeah. better. The vagina perspective. Right. Yeah, right. Yes. The view from the vagina is what I wanted. 
Absolutely. <laughs> Rebecca's amazing, by the way. I, 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 and like and I was about to say the same thing. Rebecca. She's incredible. Absolutely. So continue to talk about her because I really love her designs for the characters. And uh, no, I, I was I was smitten right away. Chris is adorable. Yeah, she's They're all adorable. Absolutely. Yeah, and Rebecca was. I know uh, it's like yeah, it's cute. Yeah, it's like cute, sexy. It's like yep, it's, it's really cool. It's like non-offensive <laughs> because they're so animated. It's it's such a wonderful style that she has. Anyway. Yeah, and she was um, someone you know. I've known her. I think I might have hired her the, for some of her earliest work because she did some hack slash stuff. And she was a friend of a friend via um, Savannah College, I think. And <clears throat> I always thought, you know, like, kind of that she was, I don't know, I don't want to say underused, but, like, they would put, you'd put her on Buffy or something like that. And I think um, and she would do a great job. But what Sarah's so good, I mean, what Rebecca's so good at is cartooning. <laughs> you know? Like, she's yeah. a cartoonist. Like, she's really good at making these really, and, like, we were doing license likenesses and stuff. You don't get to necessarily scratch that itch. So... Um, and also, like, I think, be, and I've noticed this having done comics now for a long time with uh, women collaborators, is that people tend to be really nervous about giving women sexy stuff. Like, they, there's this just this nerves about, like, there'll be some kind of backlash. Oh, like, we'll be offended or, like, yeah. that's, like, yeah, inappropriate. How dare you? <laughs> Yeah. No. Yeah. no. Well, not with me. I don't know how many women are like that, but I don't think a well, lot the, oh, are like that. You know, I mean, like, I, I think there's, <laughs> and that's one of the things I would, you know, I've known Rebecca for a long time. I know she's not, um, that she would love it, that she wanted to do this kind of stuff and nobody was asking her. And so I kind of feel like that's probably the position for a lot of women in comics. Like, I, you know, I worked with Emily Stone and, and um, I, I, they, they just, people tend to give them like, I don't know, sort of sterile stuff or, or cutesy stuff or, and, and I think, you know, you, it, who doesn't want to draw cool, sexy stuff, right? Like, yeah. it's just a weird. Yeah. Or like, you know, or thing. giant alien balls or something. I don't know. Nobody wants to draw that, but I wrote it in anyway. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> That's what's great about the book though, because it is half, cute sexy stuff and then there's this heavy metal kind of influence of you know the aliens designs mm-hmm. themselves and then of course the alien fucking yeah and then the alien fucking <laughs> well and, you know something <laughs> i really well, like i was thinking about with the book and, and was kind of an initial pitch was you know sex is kind of absence from so much sci-fi you know you, like especially the most recent stuff is so sexually sterile and uh but there would be no life in the universe anywhere unless there was some kind of sex, right? Sure. Like that, I mean, for any kind of life, yeah, we, there has to be some kind, unless it's a single cell splitting or whatever, but there, there's got to be, for, for any of this to occur, there's some kind of reproduction. <laughs> so so it's, it was weird to me having thought about it, like, oh, there's never been a story about reproduction across the universe, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Like, yeah, sci-fi stuff that I've watched, like, I think of, like, I'm a, uh, I can't believe I want to say this, but I'm a big Doctor Who fan. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, I just outed myself. But, like, they're even scared of kissing. <laughs> Shut up. They're even scared of, like, kissing on that show. And I know it's a family show and stuff like that, but, I mean, that's just, like, an example of how they don't, there's, like, no sexuality in anything. Or Star Wars, too. I mean, they so, like to kiss, right? That's the biggest one. I mean, <laughs> Star Trek, you know, because of Kirk, you had that aspect, and and there was yep. definitely Star Trek. I mean, I think Star Trek is sort of a bigger influence on Money Shot than Star Wars for that reason, because yeah, it was about exploration and um, all that sort of stuff. But yeah, Star Wars is weirdly uh, sexless. Like it's just, and you know, even the the small moments that are there, like Princess Leia wears a slave bikini, is still like not the kind of sexy that's intimate and mutual you know it's sort of like mm-hmm. it's like this weird it's just a weird not that i don't like that costume because i do but we put on both our male and female character in uh, issue four but uh but i there's like no <laughs> mutual erotic content yeah so um so yeah we try to provide that that was our you know and then on the other end i think with you mentioned heavy metal and i mean i'm the i'm an editor there so i know but yep. the the old heavy metal stuff tended to be sex, like sexual, but it also was like, 
you know, it was mostly just from one viewpoint of like horny weird dudes, and uh, which is great, and I'm totally good with that. But there, it was it's only one sort horny of, weird dude. Well, like Mobius, you know, or or uh, those are amazing artists, but there was one kind of sort of sexuality per, or you know, yeah, you know, scary or or uh, I mean, I remember well, getting that you know issue of heavy metal when I was a kid. And it was a serpiary thing, Druda. It was just like giant buttholes in your face all the time you know <laughs> <laughs> i missed that issue <laughs> yeah. i i've got to research this i mean research yeah. it you know for, we'll for the it comic in, yeah. we'll do it well in, but but for, for i understand what tim's I saying check out these buttholes yeah <laughs> <laughs> really? i understand what tim's <laughs> what tim's saying regarding the uh you know uh from sexuality from one point of view because basically it was just like naked alien women sex bots Mm -hmm. in these very pin-up sort of poses and yeah it was it was just like vargas watered down for sci-fi basically which i like and i love that it just yeah yeah, it's like i have no problem with that either but it's just like it does get a little boring it's a little one yeah you know yeah a lot more there's a rainbow of sex to sexual stuff. <laughs> sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, and again, using the idea of, you know, Chris is kind of a female Captain Kirk in terms of going for it, but also there's a means mm-hmm. to an end because as she reminds everybody in issue three, her crew, hey, you know, we're, we're onto something here and we're going to make money and that's going to fund what we really want to do in science and everything. But we'll have fun along the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There is a goal. Yeah, and there's an overarching theme I think that goes to the issues too. Is that you know as they get into this, sometimes they forget that they're doing it for science, right? Because they're all really competitive, and they're all really like to survive in science. You have to be, um, you know, a a competitive person and somebody who wants to win. And so that comes out in most of their personalities, just all across the board. So. You know, they start getting obsessed with like what their audience score was. You know, like what mm-hmm. what did, what was their rating on this scene, and um, and so I kind of felt like you know, as a means to keep the story going as well, but and also not to like move your characters on a thing that people like. It's like part of the story has to be that also they kind of like doing this, even though they they complain about it. They've sort of opened themselves up. They've discovered things about themselves by banging it out with their teammates and also with you know giant mm-hmm. amoeba, right? Like. <laughs> They've learned some stuff. <laughs> yeah, they're more comfortable with themselves. Instead of being closed up, you know, science geeks, they're just like, now we are porn stars, and they feel very empowered by it. And it's like a drug. It's addictive. <laughs> they all need therapy. <laughs> all of the characters. <laughs> but whose idea was it to connect, like, YouTubing with this uh, amongst you two? I, I, YouTubing? Yeah, or, you know, basically the way that they're shooting their sex scenes and then crowdfunding oh, and oh, really that whole aspect of, you porn, know, this kind of citizen media that's going on. I mean, it's more of the porn hub thing, I think, it, but it's definitely that. Yeah. That, that's, uh, yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. There's, but the, mm-hmm. um, I mean, that was something I kind of, I have a couple of um, friends who work in the adult industry and one oh. of the things, yeah, well, one of the things that, not, uh, not me, by the way, not me, no, not you. <laughs> Uh, but you know, I went to a, um, a dinner with a bunch of them because we went out to uh, there was a, a adult con- you know adult film conference out in the suburbs and they got me uh, my friend Tony got me tickets and I went out and I had uh, dinner with a bunch of adult performers and one of the things they were talking about which kind of I thought was interesting and paralleled um, what I was kind of going through in comics was they were talking about how like you know you said everything was done by studios and everything was done by these porn companies like you know big ones out uh, in california or or and it was and they were it was sort of being democratized like you could have your own porn hub channel and you could um you know put up your own content and direct your own stuff and it's it reminded me a lot of what hypothetically was going to happen in comics which was that we would be able to take back some of the control from marvel and dc and publish our own stuff and you know and that the internet would help us do that i don't know if it happened quite the way uh it was envisioned but you know there's obviously like there's parallels to that with science too like if you could do this stuff without a university if you could do research you know on your own and you could crowdfund it or um 
you know, this idea that mm-hmm. we would democratize all these things, it, it works across entertainment and maybe science. And, and so that was something I thought was worth, uh, you know, look, sort of exploring. Um, and obviously having Sarah's voice on that, you know, you, you understand mm-hmm. this stuff really well. I mean, you, you exist. Yeah. Twitter internet. and Instagram. <laughs> Insta tits, as I call it. Um, <laughs> Stop making so, good jokes any day now. <laughs> well, Sarah, I'm, I'm curious because, like, where's the balance? Because I know you're a comedy writer. I know you worked at SNL. Uh-huh. But so currently... Okay, well, SNL, okay, I got to clear that yeah, up. Yeah, tell us. things got so convoluted with that. It was just so... That's ridiculous. partially my fault. I apologize. Well, I said- years, yeah, years, years and years ago, I was... Um, I got... Uh, at Adam McKay just got me this... Uh, thing to do which is for weekend update on snl and i was a contributor so they would send me the the uh jokes the setups and stuff and i would send them back punchlines and stuff and i'd do that every week and i did that for like three years or whatever i mean a a lot of uh, comedians do that actually sure um so i was not like people like start saying like i was a staff writer well they say writer and then that's assumed to be a staff writer and it was not that at all and so when I got in trouble for a <laughs> tweet, the alt-right decided to dox me and they went crazy on me and they were reporting and they're writing articles saying SNL writer wow. said, you know, this shit. And so, and then they were calling SNL and SNL's like, she doesn't work here. And so then they were saying like, she's a fraud. And I'm like, I haven't said anything. They just, they got the wrong information. They, uh, they broadcast it out there, and then instead of owning up to their own mistake, they called me a fraud. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. no, I was a Weekend Update contributor, which they okay. gave me the go-ahead that I could say. So, and that's what I was. So, it's not technically, it's not like tech, a writer or a staff writer or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, but it isn't nothing yeah, either. Yeah, it's not nothing. Yeah, it was, it was fun. I mean, yeah, a bunch of, like, yeah, it's, it was, uh, they stopped, they ended that program, the is freelance whatever uh thing really? for that after Trump got elected because they their ratings boosted <clears throat> so high they didn't really need any outside contributors anymore because they were doing fine on their own, I guess. I'm kind of making uh, assumptions there. But that was like yeah, two thousand sixteen. So I haven't heard from And so what years were you doing that? <laughs> I you know, I don't know specifically I want to Or or even like cast or who was the head writer then? Well, you said Adam yeah, McKay um, was giving you stuff and feeding you, but like, yeah, was it oh, when no, Seth no. Meyers was, was running he it? Just, was it? He, he was no. Um, McKay was is just was just my friend, and he oh. asked me like what I would want to do, and then he contacted them, and then they contacted me, and then it okay. was just through emails and stuff like that. So, and yeah, it was like 2013, probably to 2016. Okay. I'm guessing I could be completely off. It was like, you know, it was well, I don't even think about it really anymore, but it keeps getting brought up. So it's like, I really want to, I was like, I was on Hannity, like Hannity was talking about me. Like, geez, I was like, shut up. Wow. (laughs) So mad about all of that. I hate them. They got into my, they hacked my phone. I was getting texts from these horrible people. I was just, because of a tweet. Yeah. Because of a stupid tweet. That was a complete joke, but. It kind of went, it can happen occasionally. The internet is scary. It's just, yeah. it's terrifying, especially Twitter. But yeah, it just blew over eventually. Thank God. I still have the occasional like trolls, alt right trolls and stuff who will, you know, find my phone number and text me something horrible about Jeez. getting raped or something. It's just, Jeez. and I'm like, fuck off. And I think about like putting their phone number on, on Twitter or something, but I just, Revenge. Can't do it. I can't. Yeah. Yikes. You're the first person I've ever spoken to who's been doxxed, and that's, you know, good Lord. Oh, I yeah. appreciate you sharing about how horrible it is. Yeah, they got into my emails. They got, I was terrified they were going to find my address, and, you know, like, you know, I live with my very, very, very ill mother, and I was just starting to get really scared for a little bit, but then I know the internet, and I knew that it would blow over as long as I didn't 
you know, keep it going, which I did a little bit, but, <laughs> but I did, then I let it go because I couldn't help stop. it. I was like, yeah. fuck you sure. all. But yeah, eventually, yeah, eventually died out. But yeah, it's, it's terrifying how fast it, and how many people there are. And I'm like, yeah. I'm just like a girl on the internet, you know, it's like, these are strangers and it's like death threats, rape threats, like just horrible, horrible, horribleness. Yeah, well, think of being sort of, you're like the first generation of people who sort of like, that you could become a comedian not by, you know, and, and that's definitely what I consider, even though you're, you don't like do a lot of stand up or something like that. But like, you're, mm-hmm. you're doing jokes out into this audience and you can try and start material out and doing all that sort of thing. But you're like the first mm-hmm. generation of people who did this because you were, I mean, I, when I got on Twitter in like 2009, you were already there. And you were like, you were, you were doing that. I? Oh, God, I've been on Twitter that long. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> it, was like, it, was maybe, it was like 2010, I think. Because um, so you were one of the first people I followed, I think. So you've definitely been on there well. But like, you were like, I think you were one of the first people I followed, uh, honestly. So if I, I had, I don't think I'd been on there much longer before you were, hopefully. <laughs> I think I, yeah, I started Twitter. I don't know. It's, I don't, I don't like to bring up the past. Um, I started Twitter just as like, yeah, just for, um, to test out material, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, just to, I realized that it was the best thing about Twitter was it was, you know, it was like having an audience and you could see how many likes or retweets you got to see if a joke played well. And, that's, I just used it for like, you know, that almost like a scientific purpose to see what works and what doesn't. Um, and then it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then people were coming up to me at parties and saying, Oh, I've seen your Twitter account. It's so funny. And I was like, what? <laughs> and then, yeah. So I was like, I guess I'll just keep writing jokes on, on the tweeter, the tweeter. <laughs> <That's> amazing. <laughs> so how, does your current comedy career work? Like, I mean, are you making money from your comedy? I mean, like, like if you don't mind me asking. Um, well, I've got, I, I get gigs occasionally. The thing is, like, I live very remotely and isolated because um, I'm, I'm actually a full-time caretaker for my mom and it mm-hmm. takes up all of my time. So if I do, if I get offered anything, I have to do it remotely. And it's usually not for like a long-term Thing. Mm-hmm. Although this, con- this comic will not end, will it? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm no. kidding. <laughs> Hopefully, it won't end. <laughs> oh, just humor. It's just some humor. Um, yeah, like I worked on a, a UK show, uh, Frankie Boyle's uh, New World Order, and I wow. did um, some jokes for a couple of seasons on that, and that was funny. Very nice nice man um and yeah just like odd writing stuff um yeah it's not it's i don't get a lot of money for a lot of it's it's very like hard living right now but it's 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 okay do you do, make but, money oh, from your online persona in any way um no okay <laughs> we don't even know how to no, monetize no. that I mean, Twitter should pay you for your account. That's, there's <laughs> there's got to be a way for you. They to, should, well, they should verify me if anything. It's it's very frustrating. I was about to be verified um, days before they uh, closed public verification because of all the Nazis and ever yeah. the whole like upheaval and everyone being all angry about them having uh, verified all these Nazis. <laughs> Which is just a phrase that we can say nowadays. You know, they're verifying yeah. all these Nazis <laughs> casually. And so, um, yeah, I'm still like unverified on there. And I was like, well, that would be nice if they could change that up. And then maybe, you know, the money would just come pouring in because I'd have a blue check mark. Because <laughs> that's how these things work. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> The independent comics will cover all those bills, Sarah. Don't worry. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Has the porn industry <laughs> reaction to Money Shot? I get emails. I don't. Do I, I, well, yeah, but oh, we all get Adam and Eve that. catalogs, Tim. That doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> nice. No, uh, but I mean, because I know a few we people. Got... Uh, but 
the, you don't know what that can we say the the Playboy thing? We got the Playboy thing. Hey, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, we did. Uh, well, we should, probably shouldn't announce that just yet because we haven't. Oh, 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 uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we had. I know. was gonna say something I wasn't supposed to. There's a nothing thing. Yeah, nothing. don't worry. I can edit it. No, but oh, we okay. have no or whatever. Yeah, we've gotten. Well, I mean, we've gotten offers to do some stuff. Um, for affiliated publications, maybe that's the best way to say it. And then, okay. uh, but but we've gotten, <laughs> I've gotten, uh, uh, you know, I've had re- people reach out to me who were uh, directors um, or own studios or, or you know, were uh, performers, and people have been uh, like excited about it in a, in a pretty uh, awesome way. There's a lot of nerds in the porn industry. I mean, you might be surprised to find out <laughs> of uh, oh. and stuff and. Um, yeah, so it's cool. I think, uh, you know, there's an authenticity to it. I think that they, they recognize I, I've actually, you know, besides uh, my friend Tanya, who I, I talked to about this and, and her husband, Alex, um, there's other people I, w- I would love to get more interviews from just to kind of get it, make it even more authentic. So if you're a adult performer and you read money shot, uh, drop me a line on Twitter and I will interview you and use your, uh, your information to make the story even better and more authentic. So. You know, anybody out there. Yeah. yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> there you go. Now, that's my kind of back matter. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, good jokes. Good jokes. Sarah, are you a big comic book fan? I mean, are, you know, how are you a nerd? Um, you mentioned see. Dr. Who, well, obviously. Okay, I, yeah. no, I, no, I didn't. <laughs> no, of course not. Uh, I love Doctor Who. I have a problem. I do not like the current seasons of Doctor Who, though. But I'm, I, I I'm with you, actually. And it's sad because oh, I well, Jodie Whittaker, I think would be a great Doctor, and the writing is I under servicing her. The writing, the writing. I know, but the thing is, like, you can't say like I don't like the new Doctor because she's a woman. No, that's not why the show is really turned to. But just. It's just very sad, and it's almost like my favorite show has died. I'm like really upset. I understand. But um, I'm hoping it'll. I don't know. I don't know. This season's a little better than last season, I guess. Ugh, I guess. It, it's it's a shame that they did this with the female doctor. I wish yep. like it could have been like, you know, Moffat would have stayed on or someone who wasn't. No, but anyway, sorry. I'm really gonna. I can't Doctor Who geek too much. I'll lose. Oh please, no! <laughs> you're at the right place. Good lord! Like it's forty percent of my show lately has been about Star Trek Picard and how frustrated I am, and more so with Discovery. I've heard, but... I've heard about Picard, about how people are hating Picard. I have not seen it, but I think it's like on the same vein. People who are griping about the new Doctor Who are also griping about Picard. Like it's sort of the same fandom. And it's just like we're all very sad sci-fi nerds right now. <laughs> like what's going on? But um, no, with comics, I was when I was a teenager, I was super into comics. of X Men cool. and uh, like all of that that shit back in the yeah, whenever. <laughs> oh, please give me a year. Make, make me feel no incredibly way. old. It's all good, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> You, you know, way, way back, like the early 2000s. You are like 50 years older than me. Exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, when, I was little, when I was a little kid, I loved Hack Flash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I think I was around 10, and I picked up Hack Flash <laughs> at the, um, the comic book store. And I, loved, I really was, though, I was a fan of Hack Flash. Um, which is the only reason that. I have given you the, the time of day at all, Tim. <laughs> yeah, no, just, I'm well aware, Sarah. I'm well aware. <laughs> you could have been Cassie Otherwise. Hack, Sarah. I, I could have cast you I, as you Cassie Hack. I, 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 I think I might, like, one year, I think I was, when I was being super nerd, I used to cosplay, uh, but uh, I wanted to cosplay as Cassie Hack one year, I remember. Um, I don't know why that didn't happen, but... Um, I, I was yeah. not aware of this, so this is all news to me. Yeah. But yeah, that would have been awesome. So, there you go. I still can. I mean, no, I don't, like no, no. wait. I don't like cosplay no. anymore. <laughs> I'm over that phase of my life. Now I just show my tits and my ass. I don't actually <laughs> right wear costumes. 
<laughs> right, right <laughs> to the side, yeah. <laughs> it's not, I don't make things that complicated anymore <laughs> for attention. I can just show my goods. I don't have to like make elaborate costumes. <laughs> it's much easier. You know, to, right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to feed my daddy issues, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, um, yeah. So I mean, I haven't really like, yeah, I haven't been in the comics, like read the comics, any comics, like in a while. Um, I just read Lock and Key. Um, okay, very well. Because I'm I'm friend, well, like I'm friendish friends with Joe Hill, and um, my friend sent me his comics, and I loved them. And I'm watching the show now, which is actually yeah. really really good. Yeah. And fun. So I think, yeah. And I reread Watchmen um, recently because the show was on and I couldn't remember it because I read it, read it way back in the day. Um, in 2007. And 2007. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. That's awesome. I, I, um, well, here, I'll give a word balloon spoiler. I'm talking to Dave Gibbons uh, tomorrow. That's oh, nice. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm a big fan, and he's been a great friend to the show. So. Uh, um, but I was going to say... I was, go. I'm sorry, go say it again. I was just going to say also like Preacher. I think it's Preacher's my favorite comic. Preacher awesome. was great. Yeah. Absolutely. Right after Hacksash. <laughs> don't, give, don't give Garth any more. <laughs> right after Hacksash. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I heard when you were talking about Doctor Who and and my frustrations with Picard, and we all know everyone's mm-hmm. frustrations with the Star Wars stuff. My buddy Rob Meyer Brene made a very interesting theory, and I kind of there's there's some validity to it. Um, don't you think that now that the big studios want to get more general audiences into these things, they end up watering mm-hmm. down the product? Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, I don't know because it's like. Well, I was going to say it's just if we wanted a more general audience when Matt Smith's era of Doctor Who, like that, you know, they rebooted it after the Tenant era. Mm-hmm. God, I'm such a nerd. I'm sorry. I have to apologize <laughs> for being a Doctor Who nerd. I don't know why. Um, but uh, it, it became huge in America. Well, not huge, but a lot bigger. And I thought that that was very... I thought that they kind of did... They didn't water it down, but they made it more... I don't know, Disney-esque almost to, to yes. you know, just make a, a broader appeal to everyone. And it was, it was almost, I mean, the plots were kind of complex, but I thought that the basis of the show was very uh, more simplified because it was about the relationship with his companions and the doctor and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And so it seems like what they're doing with the new series is just, it's just so like political correctness gone crazy. Yes. It's just, it's so woke. And it's like, I'm, you know, I'm liberal. I'm, I'm, I'm leftist, whatever. But it's like, for me, it's just, it's so preachy. And it's so like, there was like one episode where it was like, like we use too much plastic. And I was like, I can't, this is not entertaining. This is depressing right. and preachy. <laughs> and, and it's, and there's this like basic plot point. that's just, just basic writing, just the horribleness of like the whole show. And it's like, it's watered. It's, I don't even know if it's just watered down. It just seems to be completely off kilter. It's like, they don't, it's like, they don't care about entertaining us or they don't care. It just seems like everyone's very lazy. And I hate saying that because I'm sure people, you know, they're fighting their asses off or trying to, or sure. I don't know what's going on, but it's just, it's like all the heart has died and all the magic. Yes. All, you know what? It's not funny anymore. And it's not fun. And it used to be really, like, it used to be funny and it used to be fun. And it's just, now it's like, how else are we killing the environment? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or how else are we wrong? I think, in our I mean, general life. Of, yeah. Just a bit of editorialization is, I think, to degree, is we've all been following these franchises for like too long. Like, they, they ran their course for us. They're for someone else. So that's why you need new shit like Money Shot. You know, that's for... Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, I mean, and not just like to, to plug our shit, but to me, the thing I'm noticing more and more is that, you know, people used to sort of be into something and then 
you know, it's general. It is general audience. Star Wars was always a general audience. Star Trek was always a general audience. I don't think they dumbed it down or generalized it. It's just that you got more sophisticated, right? You just, you saw, you've seen enough Doctor Who now. You've seen enough Star Trek, you know, like, like, and now you should try. I will never see enough Doctor Who. (laughs) Yeah, of course not. But I just think that's, and that's kind of, I, I think where we are at in general, like, that's why we have these angry fans because, you know, they're, they've they been reading Marvel and DC for 30 years and they wanted to follow sure. them. Well, maybe you should just read, maybe if you like superheroes, read fucking Invincible or something, man. You know, like, yeah. I, like to some degree, I just oh, think... Invincible is great. Yeah. yeah sure was. And so maybe there's a way to, you know, uh, use that example for all of us. Because, you know, like, we need new stuff to hit, you know? and Oh, if, yeah. yeah. If... If maybe part of it is just you know we're we're aged out like to some degree we've seen it like you've seen the magic of Doctor Who mm-hmm. and and I've seen the magic of Star Wars and Star Trek and I was like those are great and so now let's put uh, prehensile alien penises in it and make something new uh, yeah let's <laughs> throw some dicks into it you know <laughs> no I hear what you're saying Tim just add a handful of tits add a handful of ass there you go <laughs> Stir it and make them cute sexy like Rebecca does yeah. I like to add a handful of ass. That's a great term because ass is just like a bunch. Is it one? A feature, I think I saw that on a double feature with a hat full of rain. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Handful of ass. it's like pretty a sure quarter of a cheek or like one boob is basically all you're adding with a handful. <laughs> you can't see that I was actually making the gesture with my hand. <laughs> uh, radio. In the yeah, that I, yeah. I hear what you're saying though, Tim, because I also think you're right, and it's easier for a show like The Boys or The Expanse to get fans because there's no baggage there, and it is something new. Yeah, it's new. So we yeah, get excited yeah. about it. Basing it on something, those they're not completely original, but you know, I don't know. Yeah, just uh, you're rubbing the you know the serial numbers off and doing your own version, but but I think you know, like instead of asking Justice League to be the boys, just make the fucking boys. You know, what? like, like, yeah, we, like exactly, you have these yeah. old fans. They're like, "Well, that's not realistic. Batman could never wear that in the real world." It's like, that's not the fucking real world. You're too old. Get away from this. Like, you're, you're, <laughs> it's, it's a goddamn problem. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so you're read, killing me. Read, read independent <laughs> comics is what I'm saying. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Tim is getting angry. <laughs> yeah. Now you say you're. Um, <laughs> You've already written the fourth issue, or I should say, you've already kind of teased what's happening in the first year or the fourth issue. Well, but and then you said the second that. arc is going to get into a different thing. How far along do you have Money Shop mapped out beyond uh, the second arc? I mean, we have the seeds yeah. sort of for at least you know like twenty issues. Um, okay, because so when the original pitch, you know, was kind of set up for for about that much stuff, and then the way I do everything is just like. And, and this will really help because I work pretty closely with um, Sarah and Rebecca and, and Kurt. And uh, so I can kind of just look at what they are finding that works. And I can, you know, I can go with the inspiration that we, if there's characters that are really standing out. We can go that direction. So, okay. So we have like 20 and then we can kind of improv it, which, you know, we have a comedy writer on staff. So improv is obviously your favorite thing on earth. And, uh, so oh, you know, you do. You have a, you have a comedy writer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll I'll tell him. I'll tell him you said hi. <laughs> and, but, uh, him. <laughs> of yeah, for sure. man. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking man. I made sure to accentuate the him in there. <laughs> <laughs> Women are funny too. <laughs> Give us a chance. Straight Not to Jerry man. Lewis. Well, that's you know. That's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but by the way, the fact that I said Jerry Lewis speaks volumes because yeah. let's be honest, Jerry Lewis. Well, I mean, mm-hmm. That's something yeah. you know. When I first worked with, started talking to Sarah, that's when I think Adam Carolla said something to that effect about chicks not being funny or something. Really? And I remember. Yeah, I, was, I think it was Carolla. Yeah. I remember thinking, <sighs> really like, holy shit, just fucking follow follow Sarah. Like I couldn't believe someone thought that and and was like. How can you say that? Like, just follow Sarah on Twitter. You'd be covered. You, you'll you'll know that, you know, their women are way funny. I just, honestly, I hate, okay, this is, I'm going to cry for just a second, but it's like, I hate that there's like, 
two categories. Like there's women comedians and male comedians. It's like, yeah. can't we just like be fucking comedians? Like I yes, said a joke like that, <laughs> where I said like, I don't want to be a female comedian. I want to be a comedian. Yeah. Like, you know, with big tits, but like, I don't want to just <laughs> <laughs> like categorized like that like women are funny it's not about women are funny or men are funny it's just like just we're all human we're all fucking people you know yeah. <laughs> we can like be funny or be not funny it's like there are men who are not funny there are women who are not funny there are women who are funny and there are men who are funny I mean it's just uh, it's just very frustrating to me because you don't I don't think of comedy in that you know <laughs> that definition for uh is female comedy versus male comedy. I mean, I guess guys can't joke about their periods, but, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I joke about dicks all the time. I don't have a dick. I'm always like, fuck my dick, you know? I don't have one. <laughs> Do you, Sarah, I'm going to ask you the Kelly Sue DeConnick question I always ask. And I love Kel. Oh. Do you think it's getting back? I, you, do you, wait, you, I missed what you said there. What did you say? Oh, no problem. You're going to ask me the what question? It, because you, you're, you're saying that there's the two categories of women comics men comics and that a lot of people yes. don't think men or women are funny do you think it's getting better um yes i do i see a lot more female comics i mean there's like tons of netflix specials now yeah. and there's tons of amazing female comedians and i think men are being more open to it i don't know if it was because the me too revolution which kind of got a little crazy but it's 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 definitely gotten better. I mean, it everything has gotten better in that you know perspective since whatever the forties when we're all stuck in the kitchen. But you know, right. Right. it's it is it has gotten better. I mean, it's it's fine. <laughs> it's no, 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 no. And, and truly, <laughs> I'm also say, not do. saying stop and like okay, it's better enough. Let's you know we can always be doing better. No, but but no, you are seeing that there is an improvement. Yeah, I th- okay. I think so. I mean, from what I've okay. seen, from you know, ten years ago, even maybe it's it's gotten better. Do you know the writer? Is it Nell Scovell? I don't know him personally. I've heard his name before, definitely. Actually, it's a woman, and maybe I'm saying it wrong. Is it? Oh, but sorry, she, I don't know. No, that's okay. Know she was the showrunner <laughs> of Sabrina the. Teenage Witch, the Melissa Joan Hart version, but she wrote with uh, Gary Shandling for Larry Sanders, longtime comedy writer. Oh, and I saw her oh, okay. live, and in Chicago, and she just wrote a book a year ago, two years ago, and great book about her whole career. And I asked her the same question. I said, "Is it getting better?" And she said, "No." Did and that, think? and I accept that answer. No. That's fine. Oh. You know, but that's well, why I'm always I'm always than I, asking than me because she's like she's in the thick of it. With me, I was well, like judging it on yeah. like, the Netflix specials. Like, see, I don't know, but no, no, no. But I'm saying I don't still. think there's any one answer, right or wrong. And I just want to ask individuals like yourself, like Kelly Sue, and like Nell Scavell. Ah, oh, please stop judging me, John. I can't take this pressure. <laughs> 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 Did I get it right? <laughs> <You're right>. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> I'm John McLaughlin all of a sudden, and I bet Sarah doesn't know who that is. <laughs> I, I bet you're right. <laughs> no. Well, he's been dead for ten years. So I was actually choking he, a little bit. <clears throat> I, oh, I don't want you to choke. I got really upset. I was so doing it was method acting there. Um, <laughs> y'all so asked. And dance and sing. Maybe I'll get a bunch of jobs because of this podcast. That would be oh, amazing. Sure. I could turn them all down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I've, no, I, I've already had people ask me if, like, I could, you know, if they could hire you for comic stuff. And I always say, like, no, I do. I, I, no. I'm her, and she only works with me. And uh, <laughs> you're it. You're it. Just, no, I would actually say no. I would probably say no. I don't know. I'm too busy. I mean, I really yeah. am. It's, well, that, I mean, I yeah. know. I like to like focus on one thing. Yeah. Although well, I, I realize that taking care of your mom is obviously taking up a lot of your time as well. Um, are there yeah, other sure. comic avenues that you could pursue? Uh, given your situation and I mean the way that people are online and, and doing their thing beyond what you're already doing. You, you mean like 
comic as in comic book or com- comic as in comedy? Comedian. <laughs> I can- yeah, comedy. Comedian. Um, well, yeah, it's it's just I get, you know, a few people have asked for scripts and stuff like that. And Great. I kind of, um, I'm like, well, maybe, but it's just, it takes a lot of creative energy to like just write a whole script and sure. like here. And usually I'm not sleeping at night. Um, I get kept up um, a lot and it's just, yeah, but I mean, there are, there's lots of, avenues i have lots of options and stuff and hopefully you know when things get better in my personal life i can pursue more of those and maybe get some stuff on actual film or tv or something and that would be really exciting and fun because that's kind of my forte not fucking comic books but (laughs) i'm kidding i'm kidding well and then you know when we get hired to do the uh the, the screen adaptation of money shot of course you know, I'll cut you in on that deal. You know, so yeah. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you, Tim. There you go. I want to be like a, a sexy alien background character, like with like four tits. Can I please? That's like all I want to do. We're gonna strap some Twi'lek things on your head. What are those dancing? Yeah. Girls? We're just <laughs> whatever you are. We're gonna take that right on your head. <laughs> I want like four tits and like a dick. <laughs> Two asses. You go, you oh, sounds great. Right there. Yeah. That's my Look goal in life. And I just want to be like in the background, like humping something. And <laughs> it's like I that episode of uh, Friends that. where Joey's watching the porn. That's me. That's me. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure when we negotiate your contract that all it says is that. Sarah gets to play a background humpy character. And that's that. that's like the only thing <laughs> as your agent that you asked me for. So yeah, no problem. <laughs> Excellent. I'm glad we worked this out on our yeah. podcast. It's on it's on the radio, so now it's like official. So Yeah, it's well, official. You're it's just binding. Hmm. <laughs> well, we could wrap up. This was great. <laughs> okay, cool, because I gotta pee. I oh, please. Know. Absolutely. I don't I mean, want to keep I... you long. I mean, truly, I understand. <laughs> so, but, but thank you very much for coming on, Sarah. It's really been great well, meeting let you. It, let me plug the book quick. It's yes, uh, indeed. My, my shot from Vault Comics. Uh, we uh, just had issue mm-hmm. four come out. Issue five comes out in two weeks from, I think, when you drop this. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Hack and Tips Healy. And more importantly, you can follow Sarah. Uh, me. If she's still here. Yeah. Where are you at? Yes. <laughs> where um my my Twitter name? Yeah. Yes. Where am I at in my head, in my heart? <laughs> I don't know, I'm kind of lost. Um oh at notrosera dot com. I dot com? See, I can't even plug myself right. <laughs> uh I'm at Nacho Sarah. That's my Twitter handle. Beyond Twitter Nacho and Sarah Instagram. Is... Do you have like a website? Beyond Twitter and no. Do I? Okay. No. No. That's fine. I don't I think I used to. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just didn't care. <laughs> I didn't so care anymore. Um, yeah, on Instagram, Instagram, I'm not just Sarah, and Twitter, I'm not just Sarah, and don't fucking follow me if you're Trump supporter because fuck you, and <laughs> or do I don't know, and <laughs> it's okay, fine. It's just leave me alone if you do. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, that's all I have to plug. I post pictures of my tits. You can go check them out. There you go. <laughs> and I don't know Absolutely. why. Absolutely. Yeah. And I and truly, I, I'm loving Money Shot, and I'm very uh, proud of both of you. Uh, well, proud of Tim because we've known each other for a long time. But I, I love that there's this book out there and that it exists. And uh, I can wish you both continue, continued success. Thanks, Thank John. you. An honor to be on your show talking right. about uh, tits and, and dicks. Absolutely, yes. Four, four tits and a dick, please. <laughs> and if you could wrap that up together. Yes. I'm making that my bio. <laughs> there you go, R-rated from start to finish, Tim Seeley, Sarah Beatty. Their comic is Money Shot from Vault Comics, Rebecca Isaacs and Company. Handling the Art Chores, really fun book. 
And uh, if you are uh, a fan of science fiction and a fan of good comedy, you will not be disappointed by Money Shot. Thanks a lot for listening to today's Word Balloon. I hope you enjoyed it. Brought to you by the League of Word Balloon Listeners. League, your domino mask and cape are uh, part of your equipment in supporting Word Balloon, and I thank you very much for doing so. It means a lot. If you're subscribing to Word Balloon, you're helping me out. You're helping me uh, pay the bills and uh, keep the lights on here at uh, the Bat Cave, and I greatly appreciate it. Patreon.com slash Word Balloon. You can also click on the Patreon ad on the front page of WordBalloon.com. Thank you greatly for your support. League of Word Balloon listeners. Word Balloon also sponsored by Aftershock Comics. I touched base with uh, Joe Pruitt and my buddy Steve Rotterdam and company and uh, had a great weekend with them at C2E2 and it meant a lot to uh, see them. Mark Hammond, one of the marketing guys as well. Uh, Lots of fun and uh, a lot of fun too uh, checking out the uh, inventory of Aftershock Comics. So many great graphic novels and monthly comics coming your way. Stephanie Phillips, Artemis and the Assassins debuts this month. John Layman's The Man Who Effed Effed Up Time just debuted a couple weeks ago along with Zach Thompson's Undone by Blood and Mark Sable's God Killers. These books will continue to be represented with uh, the rest of the uh, Aftershock Pantheon. You know, great uh, books like Holly Masters' Killer Groove and Garth Ennis' Walk Through Hell, Animosity from Marguerite Bennett, A Baby Taith with uh, Donny Cates, um, Tim Seeley's Dark Red, and uh, Colin Bunn's Dark Ark, so many more. Go to their website, you'll find full story descriptions, preview pages, and how to get to these books digitally or the diamond codes to order them through your local shop at AfterShockComics.com. Thanks again for listening. More R-rated conversation from Word Balloon. Jimmy Palmiani and Amanda Connors panel from C2E2. It was a lot of fun. We talked about Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey, their new black label DC book, but also, you know, their their relationship and so many other projects they've done over the years. And of course, I turned things over to the audience to ask great questions as well. It was a lot of fun, and I think you will enjoy our conversation from C2E2 just this past Saturday, coming in your way in a few hours after this episode. Thanks again for listening. Until next time, Word Balloon is a copyright feature of Shaky Productions, copyright 2020.